The following is brought to you by Vertical Vet. Rethink your GPO. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Ernie Ward, Chief Veterinary Officer for Vertical Vet, and it is my pleasure to bring you once again another one of our vet med schools. And I got to tell you guys, this is a fascinating topic. This is an area that I've been interested in for really 20 years since this kind of started getting kicked around on the human medical side. And we're going to be talking about the application of artificial intelligence in veterinary radiology. And guys, we have we are so lucky today to have one of our strategic partners, one of the, the groups that we have come together with to bring you tools that can help elevate your practice. And today we are so fortunate to have the guys from Signal Pet with us today. And so many of you already know our first uh, guest today, Dr. Neil Shaw. He is co-founder and chief medical officer now for Signal Pet. He graduated down south at the University of Florida. Go dogs, have to say that, Neil. Remaining in Gainesville for his internship and residency in small animal internal medicine, and he is a diplomat of ACVIM. He founded the nation's largest group of specialty hospitals we all know and love, Blue Pearl Veterinary Partners. He then served as the first chief medical officer for Mars, which is how I came to know him and really respect him. Uh, and in fact, he headed up the whole veterinary health group there. He then founded Signal Pet in 2018 as an independent company dedicated to bringing the benefit of advanced artificial intelligence assisted diagnostics to veterinary practitioners. He is joined by the CEO and co-founder of Signal Pet, Lior Kyer. And he is a serial entrepreneur. If you guys look him up on Google, oh my gosh, he's done so much amazing stuff. Really has a fascinating personal story too, but I'll leave that for another time. He has a strong technical background in machine learning and artificial intelligence. And before starting up uh, Signal Pet with Neil, Lior was the co-founder and CEO of CodeScan. Guys, I can't Thank you enough for joining us. Thank you, Ernie. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Appreciate it. Neil, it's great to see you again. You know, I've been watching you uh, really enthusiastically as, as Signal Pet started kicking up really about the same time that we started uh, Vertical Vet. And you guys have just done amazing strides in research and, and really in practical tools in such a short time. So congratulations. No, thank you. It's been a, it's been a, a fantastic experience. It's a, uh, I see myself as really fortunate because I it's every day is more invigorating than the last. It's it's that exciting and, and uh, comfortably this is this is the future of our profession and it's a good. You know, and Lior, before we get started talking about all the amazing stuff that Signal Pet can bring to a practice, you know, I, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm really impressed with both of your personal stories, and, and I would encourage you to look up Lior. I mean, I mean, gosh, uh, you've been involved for everything from military to super high tech. I mean, fascinating individual. Thank you. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to start off with you, Lior, because I think there's so much buzz and misinformation and misunderstanding of what we're going to talk about today, and that is artificial intelligence, or more commonly referred to as AI. So I'd like to start out with you just by giving veterinarians out there watching and our members sort of a, a broad overview and definition of what do we mean by artificial intelligence? Right. Uh, AI is a very broad term. Uh, actually, a very broad term. AI has been around for many years. Uh, recently, it's it's been hyped more, much more than 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 previously, because um, there's been there's been dramatic advancement in computational power over the past uh, decade or so, uh, which allowed the the technology that existed already for many many years to be applied to to real world applications like radiology or other applications, um, uh, self-driving vehicles. So uh, in essence, it's been around for many years. It's just that the hardware and, and, and the technology that existed wasn't, say, fast enough to be able to, to, to be applied to real world applications. Um, and so today that has dramatically changed. And, and AI can be applied, uh, which, which essentially takes over tasks or, if you will, um, uh, applications that are considered intelligent human behavior. Um, and so that's what we're seeing in, in many, many different areas, including in, in the medical field and specifically also in radiology. Yeah. And I think that's a good 
point there, Neil. The fact that, okay, it's been around a while. Uh, we didn't really have the hardware that was accessible to most of us in our clinics today. And, and radiology is kind of a natural target, a good fit for this. In fact, that's really where uh, I'd say a lot of the progress in the human medical field has come from. So explain a little bit about you know, why you're so excited about bringing AI technology to veterinary radiology. Yeah, no, Ernie, that, that's just it. There's, there's a couple of reasons why radiology is the ideal and the, the ideal for AI, and it's why we chose it as, 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 our, first, uh, as our first product. Uh, one is that, to Lior's point, that technology now is tremendous and it's available. It's, it's available to, to groups to utilize it in a very focused manner, uh, such as what we are doing. Uh, the, other, the other aspect is that uh, the, the technology at an individual practice exists. So what do we need to, uh, to support a practice with artificial intelligence? Uh, we need for the practice to have a, a digital x-ray machine, and we need for the practice to be uh, hooked up to the internet. And just about all practices uh, meet those criteria. So the ability on the technology side is there, the ability at the user side that the, uh, the average veterinary hospital is there. And then very importantly, the need as a, from a clinical perspective is there. Uh, there are the vast, vast, vast majority of films that are taken today uh, don't have the benefit of a second set of eyes. And so the, especially uh, our younger associates don't always graduate confident in their radiology reading skills. And this provides an instant solution to help read radiographs, uh, especially for those who are not 100% confident on everything that they're reading. And it provides a solution instantly uh, from a point of care perspective. Yeah. So the ability to provide the technology, the, the, the ability for hospitals to use the technology and the clinical need, it's, it's, the, it's the perfect it's the perfect equation, right? Yeah, and Neil, I'm really glad that you went ahead and jumped in on that because you're right. We vary in our abilities, capabilities, and confidence when it comes to you know how we can interpret a radiograph. And so I, I want to just go ahead and dispel, I think, this myth that's out there. Uh, at least I get it a lot from my colleagues, especially when I bring up AI implications uh, in practice. And that is the AI isn't doing the diagnosis, right? It's really just kind of highlighting things that maybe we should take a second look at. In fact, you know, even in the human uh, radiology field, they call a second look, I think, or second set of eyes. So maybe explain a little bit about for people that might be concerned, wait, you're telling me the computer's going to diagnose? It's not really like that, is it? A a absolutely not. The, the computer, the computer uh, evaluates the film, evaluates the film uh, based on what it has been trained on and creates a prediction of the likelihood that a, uh, a pathology is there or an abnormality is there. It's simply a prediction and it ranks that prediction that strongly likely or not present at all. And then it is up to the clinician to take that information and utilize it and make a final decision for the clinical case. It's no different. An example would be blood work, right? right. Uh, we can uh, uh, take a tube of blood, have the machine print out, uh, 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 20 to 30 values, and then as a clinician, take those values and apply it, what we feel is, is appropriate to the clinical case. Yeah, and, and Lior, I mean, the research is overwhelmingly supportive and positive of its application in human medicine, specifically radiology, and now we're seeing pathology papers being published. I mean, so, so again, you have just went... For me, I believe this is not only that instant second opinion, you know, but it really is more robust because let's face it, even your best radiologist or best specialist, no offense, Neil, you know, it, maybe your case comes across at the end of the day and they're tired and their eyes are fatigued or whatever, right? I mean, that's one of the other values about AI. AI never gets tired. <laughs> that's exactly it. It's very consistent. It's very extremely accurate consistent and, and, and fast. And, and the real question is, it's about combining the artificial intelligence, the, the strengths of, of the artificial intelligence with the human intelligence. So it's, again, it's always, it's a, it's a decision support technology. It's not displacing and not replacing. In fact, it's only assisting and helping uh, with clinicians um, managing cases. And, and that's, that's where the technology comes in. It's really to support the human intelligence. 
Yeah, it's enhancing, it's augmenting. I mean, it's all the great benefits of this this technology that never tires. Well, well, Lior, I mean, obviously you're an expert in machine learning, so maybe you could explain a little bit about, you know, what do these applications look like? I mean, obviously I think most of us right now that are watching this are going, okay, I get it. Somehow it reads the radio, the radiographic images, but maybe explain a little bit about how this works from your perspective. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in, in the old days, uh, a lot of logic was, was used. And so you'd pre-program, if you see this, then do that. If this, then that. Um, and that changed with the, uh, with the introduction of machine learning, specifically with uh, neural networks or what we know today as deep learning. And um, this is a, a very, uh, it's, it's, it's inspired by, uh, by biological models, specifically the brain. And it's a, in essence, it's a large network of neurons where um, you receive, uh, in this case, labeled images, images that you know a certain pathology exists. And, and then this, this vast network sees thousands and thousands of these images. And it, it learns by itself. It starts from scratch. So it, it actually doesn't know anything. But once it observes these images over and over again, thousands and thousands of times, it actually recognizes the patterns and learns to, to differentiate between an abnormality and normality, between an existence of a certain condition versus non-existence. And, and guys, you know, again, this is an area that I have had a particular interest in for a long time, the reality is we're just getting started. I mean, so Neil, the other thing too is let's face it, we are dealing with a specialist crunch, I mean, around the globe. And so I think this is one other area that we can enhance our practice because let's face it, you you may be number 122 in line for your radiologist, whereas suddenly with AI, you are literally a few milliseconds away. I mean, so explain a little bit about how this can help broaden not only access but I would say utilization of a radiologist interpretation or advanced diagnostic interpretation. Right. And that, that's, that's exactly it. The, uh, uh, without a doubt, uh, the, there is more of a demand for specialists than there are currently available. And radiology uh, ranks close to the top, if not the top of, uh, specifically, there are many more films to be read than there are radiologists available to read them. And uh, the challenge for that and the challenge for the radiologists who are working really, really, really hard is that uh, the delays, it's, it's a delayed response and uh, it's, uh, it's become uh, almost cost prohibitive for many routine cases. So what uh, the, the system can do, what artificial, artificial intelligence can do is provide an instantaneous answer for the vast majority of cases that, that addresses, most importantly addresses the patient's needs and then provides feedback to the to the client to the to the pet family and helps the importantly especially in today's uh, workflow crunch helps the veterinarian make an instantaneous decision to then move on with the case which helps which helps everybody it helps the hospital team it helps the technicians and uh, we can spend less time with the diagnostics and move on to the therapeutic plan and so it, it really is a strong clinical aid. And Ernie, I'll just add what the other offshoot has happened, and we've noticed this in the last year, is very importantly, it's enabled the technicians, right? Right. Because just like a technician can read a lab report, now the technician can read a radiology report, identify what's initially, and have the doctor confirm their thoughts with an initial impression, which already moves the case further than a doctor once the films are done, done, the doctor getting to the films when they can and only starting that process of looking at the films. Gosh, it I really love this. I, I, it's just yeah. leveraging, further amplifying your abilities in the clinic. I mean, Lior, one other two, thing too, I mean, just to dispel some misinformation, because again, you know, I talk to a lot of colleagues across the country and even around the world who say, okay, Ernie, I get this, but my internet isn't so fast. What would it take hours to upload this? I mean, kind of just walk them through the process. Like it's incredibly fast. It's incredibly easy. And no, you don't have to have a supercomputer in the back of your clinic. I mean, just, just kind of walk us through the process of, of a vet clinic when they want to use SignalPet. Yeah, it's actually it's actually very very simple. 
Uh, normally, it will take our team about two to three minutes to technically set up the, the practice and connect their acquisition station to, uh, to SignalFed. Um, after that, it simply sends those images. Um, the slowest internet today uh, that you'll come across, slowest upload, would, would still you know, take you a minute or two to send your images over to SignalFed. And then it just takes a few minutes. It, uh, the images are uploaded. Uh, they're pre-processed, uh, prepared to run through multiple artificial intelligence uh, models, as we call them. Once that process completes, they, you, you, the response is sent back to the, the report is sent back to the hospital. And that all happens within a matter of a few minutes. And so from the minute that you took the x-ray, um, usually it will be less than five minutes to receive uh, back the result uh, with the report. And um, we commit to 10 minutes sometimes because the upload speed is slower and whatnot, but it usually takes just, just, you know, just a few minutes and you'll have your report ready. Yeah. I mean, it's a game changer guys. I mean, if you haven't looked at what signal pet is doing and you're in private practice, I mean, you, you owe it to your patients to do so because this is no longer Neil, like it was in our day, right? Where, you know, like you send off the radiology report and you got it back in couple of days at best. I mean, you know, so it, it's just phenomenal. Uh, so, so Lior, just continuing along with this, I mean, you know, I, you've mentioned a little bits and pieces, but how actually did you go about training the AI that's used? I mean, you mentioned, you know, okay, this is what you do. They learn, they watch, but specifically for Signal Pet, I mean, you guys had to, to do this largely on your own or did you work with universities or how did you, how did you come up with your AI? Right. So we, in essence, to get started, um, we we reached we had to reach. Um, so first off, let's go back to the beginning. We decided where are we going to focus on, right? And we focused on the majority of cases. So the the primary reasons that an X-ray would be taken, uh, which are symptoms like vomiting, limping, uh, coughing, diarrhea, and then this is more a medical question versus a technical question. So really. Uh, Neil was able to answer that, but what are the primary uh, uh, what are the primary observations or conditions that you could find that would that would cause these symptoms, right? And and so we then focused on that. Uh, the next step was to reach a consensus of through with a group of specialists on what what does it actually mean uh, for say a certain condition. What is what is what is an abnormality? for a, a very specific condition. Um, and then once the consensus is reached, then, then images were labeled, images were labeled as positive and negative. And once the computer learns that, it's able to generate many, many more positives and negatives. And actually at some point, it, it's interesting, computers teach computers. And so models teach other models. And so it, it becomes sort of a, a, a never ending process where uh, that the machine is always improving. Um, it's just always improving. And so it's very rapidly you get to the sort of say 95% accuracy. And then from 95% accuracy, you, you gradually get closer to sort of the reaching to the 100% accuracy. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's a process where the computers are just processing massive amounts of, of images and, and kind of teaching one another really is what happens. Yeah, you know, Neil, that's the part, too, that I think veterinarians really need to understand is the fact that this technology is evolving, right? I mean, so the signal pet of 2018-19 is inferior to 2022, and 2022 will be upped by 2024, right? I mean, so... 100%. I mean, yes. you know, Neil, I mean, this is really exciting. It's got to be so exciting for you to witness it, be firsthand. I, it's... it's it's beyond exciting. It is invigorating, and uh, I'll tell you, the uh, it's humbling at the same time. It's it's humbling at the same time, and then you see the potential, and you go, "Wow!" The when we initially started, uh, the the goal was to work and develop the system uh, to meet the current standards that are set by humans. Uh, straight up, that, that was our goal. That was gold standard was what that, what was set by humans. And Lior, I'm going to um, uh, speak about you. I apologize for doing that uh, on the air. And Lior was quiet. He, he didn't say anything. And then uh, along the lines in the first year, 
there was a there was a light bulb moment and i realized that we we being humans were working hard to meet the increased expectations of the machine and that the 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 scientific basis by which the the uh, algorithms process data is greater than what i was used to as a current standard and it's absolutely it was that was a light bulb moment and i, and I in fact i remember where i was uh, <laughs> to this day and it is just it is just absolutely fantastic and that's why i say it's uh this this is our this is our future we do not straight up do not need to be afraid of it it only augments and strengthens what a clinician can do it's a hundred percent hundred percent designed and will evolve to serve the needs of medicine, to serve the needs of practitioners, and ultimately, and most importantly, serve the needs of PET by increasing the quality, by increasing the availability, and lowering the cost and applying it universally. It's absolutely fantastic. And, and really, this is, this is our future. And, and this is what's happening, in, no doubt, in other industries. We are very fortunate that Lior and his team has applied this to veterinary medicine. Oh yeah, yeah. B- because it, it, honestly, the the caliber guys that we are receiving from Signal Pet, like the quality and and the innovation in this space, is unmatched. I mean, honestly, Lior, you know, you guys are are kind of at the forefront of a lot of the human developments in AI as far as you know diagnostic augmentation, in my opinion. So uh, I do want to talk a little bit too, Neil, about the the challenges because we talked about sort of a scarcity and difficulty in accessing, you know, radiologists. But at the same time, we're still talking about workforce shortages, whether they're technicians, whether they're receptionists, whether they're associate veterinarians. I mean, so I, I, I know, I mean, you know where I stand on this. I think AI is going to be part of that solution. But maybe you could share with us your vision and how SignalPent thinks that, you know, you can actually help solve some other clinical challenges. Yeah, no, with, with, without a doubt. And, and, and in part, we're beginning to realize the benefits as we go along. So certainly within radiology, how how Signal Pet uh, as a radiology product has has supplemented a, a lack of a, a lack of a availability of radiologists or such, uh, and and that's been very effective. Check within the practice certainly in two aspects. One, there will be other arenas where where we've already started the research and development process to help in other diagnostic areas to support clinicians in the evaluation of lab work and and other and and other clinical entities so cert- certainly single pet has a broad uh, agenda and we will continue will continue to expand importantly what it does is it leverages the the ability of the existing folks so an individual veterinarian and we've actually proved this out now that an individual veterinarian uh, say in practice seeing cases and having a, a large number of folks in the waiting room can now more effectively utilize their technicians to take greater responsibility and process with a very high caliber and a very high quality standard process a larger number of cases than they previously could so we see software and specifically technology software and, and the, the software that we're designing as the solution for the work workflow crunches or the, the, the lack of available folks uh, in clinics, uh, we see this truly as, as the solution. And it's, and, it's, and it's proving out very quickly. Yeah. Uh, because it, it, leverages, it leverages the ability of individuals, individual uh, veterinarians and individual veterinary teams. Yeah. And again, Lior, you know, I think that, uh, and look, let's face it, there are a lot of critics of this type of technology, and I d- disagree strongly, but, you know, this isn't necessarily replacing people. This is just allowing you to be more efficient. So maybe, again, to those people out there who are saying, oh, they're coming for my job, the computers, you know, whatever. I mean, can you just explain to them, again, this is only going to make you more efficient in delivering better patient care? Absolutely. This this only improves. It's it's uh, you have your personal assistant that is highly trained, highly highly capable, always there to assist you, and that's that's how folks should think about the technology. It's not replacing or displacing anyone. It's just helping everyone be more efficient, and 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 see more options than 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 they might have, um, and so it's only there to help. And and really, our our vision is to is to be able to provide those, 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 
the assistance, those clinical clinical answers, uh, instantly, anytime, anywhere. That's that that is our vision. Yeah, and, and I'll give you my prediction. I've written about this and lectured innumerable times about it. Look, this only grows the profession. In, in no way does this contract or in any way sort of limit or reduce our abilities. It only grows the profession. That's jobs, that's revenue, that's what accessibility, I mean, you name it. So I'm super, yeah, look, I'm a fan. Uh, so getting back to you, Neil, again, you've touched a little bit on some of the benefits, but you know, let's now talk to that veterinarian who's saying, okay, you know, this sounds good, but but I, I still don't quite get how this helps me. I'm already using a service, you know, yeah, it takes a little longer, but explain to them really how this is going to benefit them even better maybe than the traditional way of, of sending it out, waiting, and, you know, getting a radiologist review. Right. Well, I appreciate it. it first of all, uh, that, that veterinarian may be comfortable looking at their films, but the likelihood is all of their associates are not. And, and the folks that say they're comfortable um, we all could use a little bit of assistance and, and that includes radiologists who re regularly communicate with each other to get some additional support on films that they have a question on. So we could, one, we could all use a little bit, a little bit of assistance. Um, two, it actually, that confidence now in taking films, and again, we've proven it out, uh, transfers to the veterinarians in the exam room. So now the veterinarians and the associates are more confident about recommending radiology, which is fundamental. It's our fundamental diagnostic tool. A minimum database is uh, blood work, urinalysis, and radiographs, right? And across the country, radiographs are actually very poorly utilized in most veterinary hospitals. Everybody has a machine, everybody has the equipment, but radiology is a bit of a the forgotten diagnostic because as a profession, we've become uncomfortable this gives the confidence radiology now is revisited as a primary diagnostic tool. And it is fantastic. We see it happening and it, it leads to better medicine. It leads to better care. It actually lowers the cost of care and it helps everybody involved. Yeah, and, and let me tell you again how this expansion, this only, you know, this is abundance, <laughs> if you want to quote Peter mm -hmm. Diamandis, my good friend. Uh, Lior, here's the other part of this is now, okay, you are hesitant to take the radiograph because you feared that maybe your interpretation wasn't up to snuff. So now you've got an instant backdrop, right? Boom, somebody else, uh, an AI that will give you that. But let me mm -hmm. tell you, Lior, what I think happens in real life, and I've seen this in my own practices over the years, is that then you find the radiographic findings and that leads you to do additional blood work or a urinalysis or a neuro workup. I mean, Neil, you and I know this, but I just kind of want to hear it from the non-vet in the room. I mean, you know, you see how it expands. If you can get that turnaround in 10 minutes, holy smokes, man, this changes everything in that appointment. Correct, correct. And if we can, if we can increase the artificial intelligence beyond, also just beyond radiology, imagine the impact on the entire process of medical care. Oh, yeah. It, it's just it's so exciting. OK, so to finalize our conversation today, I'd like to get both of you to weigh in. And I'd like to start with you, Neil, because, you know, I mean, you and I have been in the profession about the same number of years. We've seen a lot of things come and go. We've seen a lot of promises, some that were fulfilled and many that fell short. But explain to us your vision of the future. Like, where do you see this leading us and how does Signal Pet continue to grow the veterinary profession? Maybe share your vision of the future. And then I, I would like to get yours as well, Lior. Ernie, thanks for asking. And it, 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 it specifically is a vision. I would say in, in the last 20 years, we've seen a, a significant advancement in care, a significant advancement in medicine. Uh, one example of that is growth of specialty referral hospitals. The challenge is there's also a delta in the care provided at a specialty referral hospital um, and care provided at uh, the average primary care practice. There's been a delta in that level of care, and, and that's, that's unfortunate. And what I see this uh, technology actually doing is shifting that balance to reinvesting and revisiting and actually focusing on uh, the ability of the primary care practice to t do a m much more thorough job in caring for not just the wellness care, but caring for the, the acute and uh, chronic illnesses of pets. 
Yeah, I, I think, again, it's just going to expand our offerings. I love that. Okay, so, Lior, we got Neil, and, and I would say I, I largely agree with everything that Neil just said. That's our vet perspective. So we can only see it through the lens that we know and have experienced. But you've seen different part of this in, in the world. So maybe explain to us where you think this will actually lead us uh, in the future. Yeah, I, th I think that the level of care um, across the board will increase with the support of technology. I think AI will play a, a big role in decision support. AI will be supporting almost every clinician in the world. Uh, it will be supporting uh, interpretation. Uh, it will be supporting decision-making. It will be supporting the, 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 the questions of what should I actually do? And now based on uh, a lot of data input by many, many different specialists and consensus that's reached between amongst a large group of, uh, of veterinarians and taking all that collective knowledge and actually, in a way, sharing it with everyone else through technology. And AI is the, is the vehicle to do so, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And the, the future is so bright. You know, I was speaking, guys, with a, a colleague a couple of weeks ago about this. And actually, I was mentioning uh, SignalPet. I'd written an article in one of the dog magazines that I write for. And I'd said, you know, hey, this AI-assisted you know, radiographic interpretation is just so exciting and beneficial. And I'd put you as one of my top eight technologies to watch this year. And, uh, you know, this person was like, oh, you know, I, I hear that kind of stuff all the time. Never replace, you know, the doctor, the vet, the dentist, all that stuff. And I said, well, let me explain to you where I see this. This going. I said, like, you know, I think back 20 years ago, Neil and Lior, and, uh, you know, for me to get to, to travel across the country to visit a friend, I would get out a map, you know, I would plot my course and I would do that. And I was very capable. I always got to where I wanted to go, but it took a lot of time and effort and on the road, sometimes you have to pull over and say, wait, am I on Highway 41 South or North, right? I mean, all those things. Now, today, you punch in your phone, you don't even think twice, you follow that thing. In fact, people have crashed their cars following this and I go, here's the, the difference, right? It's a whole different experience whenever somebody else is giving you the directions rather than you having to constantly refer to the map. And I said, I think that makes travel more enjoyable for me if I'm driving with my family. You know, you've got kids and dogs and all that stuff. So I do believe that AI in this application is going to be very similar. I think that we're going to look five years down the road and say, wait, I spent all that time peering at these images and saying, wait, is that a white thing or a gray thing, right? And I think it's only going to make the experience of, of veterinary medicine more enjoyable. And more importantly, we're going to get there faster because one of the things that I could never do with that old paper map, Lior, was reroute due to traffic or construction. And suddenly now I'm instantly rerouted. You just saved 17 minutes. So amazing application. It just makes our life better. So I can't thank you guys enough, not only for what you're doing to benefit pets and the profession, but also for, for helping our membership because, you know, we are comprised of about 1,200 independent clinics across the country, all desperate for improvements in our patient care, and you guys are delivering a quality product. So I, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. We're privileged to, to be able to do so. Thank you. That's right. Well, guys, you know, they're one of our strategic partners. We bring companies like uh, Signal Pet and people like Dr. Neil Shaw and Lior Kyer to you because we want to make sure that you have all the tools you need to elevate your practice. If you want to find out more, obviously, you can reach us at Vertical Vet or you can visit them at SignalPet.com. We have all their links on our website. We have all types of promotions going throughout the year. So definitely check it out. So again, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, thank you very much. All right. Well, well, guys, that is it for another edition of Vet Med School Live. You are you can see why I'm so excited about having them here today. Signal Pet is one of those companies that we want to make sure our membership know about and are utilizing because we think it can only enhance and elevate your practice. So our entire team at Vertical Vet wants to help you. And if you have questions about Signal Pet, definitely just give us a ring or drop us an email. On behalf of our team, once again, it's my pleasure, Dr. Ernie Ward. We will talk to you soon. Bye.